nature is the ultimate innovator as it creates biological collages by mashing up diverse elements from the past to produce interesting new designs for the future. Similar to when Davy Bowie used the cut-up technique, cutting out and randomly connecting words and phrases from old magazines and diary entries to generate the lyrics to many of his hit songs, predating hip-hop music sampling by years. Welcome to another handmade video. Dreamcast TV. <laughs> If you like time travelling then subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the like button to preserve our heritage for future generations. Genetic algorithms are often computer programs that draw on Darwin's theory of survival of the fittest to get the best out of something. Whether you're designing the latest aircraft, computer game, a top 10 hit, a work of art or perhaps a viral YouTube video. The simplest analogy is the mountain climbing scenario where you've got a series of post-it climbers trying to climb the highest mountain. If the climbers are like politicians or bankers, they'll just go for the fast buck option feeling their way around up to the top of the nearest mountain summit. But that's not always the highest mountain though. That's the beauty of the genetic algorithm. It includes a certain amount of random line selection to explore alternative choices and therefore is more likely to get close to the best solution. So first of all, you have a series of virtual creatures Binary strings are quite often used to encode them because they're more in tune with our digital age. The ones and zeros could re represent the presence and absence of structural components in a bridge, say, musical notes or pixels in an art picture. Then you have to rate the designs so that the best ones are more likely to make to create the next generation. So is it going to be down to the motor car design that is the fastest? Or guzzles the least amount of fuel? Or will it be the YouTube video that gets the most views? Once you've decided how you're going to rank them, then you can use a roulette wheel system to choose the parents for mating. Of course, the fittest specimens are most likely to be picked since they're represented by a much larger slice of the wheel. It's interesting to note though that although the worst specimens are least likely to be picked, they've always got a chance, albeit rather slim. A bit like our democracy. Diversity is king because you don't know for certain what genetic characteristics are going to lead to the optimum result in the future. Once you've chosen two parents, you can randomly pick a crossover point and swap over the segments, similar to what happens in nature, where the child shares a mixture of characteristics of their parents like eye colour or nose size. The next stage is perhaps the most important one, nature's accidents, mutations. It's one of life's paradoxes that sometimes our worst mistakes turn out to be our best ideas, as the discoverer of penicillin, Alexander Fleming, knew only too well. So with our example, you randomly pick a place in the chromosome and change a 1 to a 0, or a 0 to a 1, like flipping a coin. You have to use it sparingly though, because most mutations will not be practical in the real world. As Thomas Edison found out with the light bulb, the more diverse ideas you generate, the more chance you've got of coming up with that world changing invention. But you don't really want to wait a million years for a bunch of monkeys to type out the entire works of Shakespeare in order to do so. So you've just got to get the balance just right in building on what has worked well in the past with a little bit of random variety thrown in.
you keep repeating the iterative process and you should get increasingly better specimens with each successive generation. Now that you've seen that video, why not click on my other cardboard adventures?